Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to mix some black watercolour paint and I'll use it to paint this little willy wag tail. This little chatty bird is found in Australia, New Guinea, the Solomon Islands and in eastern Indonesia. We call it a uh, willy wag tail because it twists its little tail from side to side like a fan when it's looking for insects to eat. Those previous photos were mine, but this one was taken by Roger Fance, who is a friend of mine. This is the photo that I used as reference for my painting. Roger takes a lot of beautiful photos of Australian birds. Here's a quick look at some of them here. I've put some links to his Facebook and Instagram pages in the description if you're interested in seeing more. When I use watercolour paints, sometimes I can paint an area of a painting in with just one layer, like I did on the body of the chicken painting that I painted a few weeks ago. In other areas of a painting, I have to layer the paint in order to achieve the detail that I want. On this willy wag tail, the darker areas I layered with two or three layers of paint, whereas the lighter body area I painted in with just a single layer of paint. I used only three colours for this painting and I didn't use any black at all. I used burnt sienna, French ultramarine and Windsor violet. I've mentioned before in other videos that Premixed black can look a bit flat and dead looking. I used to use it when I needed it, but these days, when I'm not being lazy, I'll mix my own. I'm going to show you that and I'll show you how I layered the paint on the bird so that you can see the colours showing through the black. But first, I need to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you can get inspired, learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. They've got thousands of classes on hundreds of topics. I've said it before, there are hundreds of watercolour classes on there or maybe you're interested in photography or interior decorating. All you do is type in what you're looking for into the search bar and hundreds of classes appear that you can browse through. We're in the process of building a studio for me to paint in down the back and I turned to Skillshare to help me design the look of the inside of it. I found this class by Arlen Hernandez called Interior Design Create a Plan for Your Perfect Room. The class gave me some great ideas on how to create a mood board for the look that I was seeking for the interior of the studio. Here's the mood board that I'm creating. I'm looking for a calming environment that will be a joy to work in. And this class has helped me to get my ideas together so that I can choose the finishes that I want. The classes on Skillshare are ad free so that you can stay in the zone while you're exploring new skills. New premium classes are launched each week and the entire catalogue is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese and German. If you'd like to explore the site, the first 1000 people to use the link in my description or to use my code Louise de Massey will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Okay, let's have a look at this willy wag tail painting now. With this painting, the first thing I did was mix some black from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. When I want to mix a dark colour, I find it easier to use paint that has been freshly squirted out on the palette. That way I don't have to pick the paint up with a wet brush, which will add water to the mixture and make it paler. I use a fair amount of paint as well. I try not to wash my brush out between dipping it into the different colours, but if I do, I make sure that I dry it really well before I go into the next colour. 
I try to use equal amounts of the two colours, but if it looks a bit flat and lifeless, I'll add a bit more of one colour or the other. When I pick the palette up off the table, the paint doesn't move because there's no water in the mixture. I also need a grey for this little bird, so I used the same colours, French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, but this time I'll use more water in the mixture to dilute it and make it paler. If I want a cool grey, I'll add more of the blue. If I want it warmer, I'll put more of the Burnt Sienna in it. Now I'll get a bit more water and mix that in and maybe a touch more of the blue to cool it down. I also needed a small amount of violet, so this is Windsor Violet that I've got here. When I look at the reference photo I look for variations in the black feathers. I look for other colours. I look for dark areas and lighter areas and I can see some blue and some violet areas. So when I begin I start with those colours and I'll work my way up to the black and the darkest areas. I started with the head area and I wet it with water. I painted around the white feathers that were on the top of the head and around the eye as well. And I took the water down to about here. Then I used my grey mixture. It was starting to separate a bit, but that didn't matter. I painted that onto the wet paper. I paint carefully around the eye and those little feathers that I wanted to keep white. The water on the paper gives me time to fiddle and take my time. I don't have to rush. I'm not worried about the paint drying and leaving hard edges where I don't want them. While that was wet, I dropped in some of the violet and that blended with the grey. I didn't take the paint all the way to the edge of the water here. I kept it back away from that edge so that I could join up with it here now with some more water. If I took the paint all the way to the water's edge, I'd get a hard line along there and I don't want a hard line there. Once that was wet, I kept adding the grey paint, but I also added a few areas of violet as well. That adds interest to the painting and later on you'll still see some of those violet areas after I layer the black over the top. I took the paint down to that first edge of feathers. For the body of the bird, I wet the paper with water and then I used the grey mixture. I made sure to leave a lot of the white of the paper showing. Here I also dropped a small amount of burnt sienna onto the wet paper to add a little warm spot on the tummy area. I spread that out with my damp brush. Then I needed some of my black paint because it's starting to dry. I picked it up with my wet brush. There were some black feathers under the wing here. So I painted that on and I pulled the colour in to create those jagged feather edges. I needed to create those little jagged feather edges on the other side as well. There were some darker black feathers just here as well. I wet the paper here where the feathers were going to sit. That would give me some soft edges and when I pulled the paint out onto the dry paper it gave me some hard edges as well. I tried to do this 
fairly quickly and confidently. I didn't want it to look like I'd laboured over it. I thought I'll get the paint on there and I'll accept what it gives me. I won't fuss with it. Here I pulled the paint onto the dry paper to create those little feather separations again. I washed all of the tail feathers in and the wing feathers in all together and I used the grey mixture for that. I also dropped some violet on there while it was wet. Then I re-wet the head and the body of the bird and I started to paint the black on. When I did that I tried to leave some of that underwash showing. So you can see me here I'm patting the paint on to leave some of that colour showing in places. So just here you can see it's quite patchy. Here I'm painting it on fairly dark. I see some dark spots on the reference photo so I've got a fair amount of pigment there. I'll come back and darken the head in places. I won't put the darker paint everywhere though. So again you can see I'm trying to leave some of that lighter wash showing in places. Okay that needs to dry now before I move on. When that was dry I got my black paint again and I started to paint on these little feathers here on the wings. You can see I've pulled the colour back onto the lighter area there to create those little separations in the feathers. Right on the tip of this group here I've got some violet. I'm using the colour at its full strength. And a bit more black. I also dropped some water onto this area here. That's where you see those watercolour blooms showing to add a bit of texture. I went back to the head then and I started adding some darker areas with some black. I used more pigment this time. I've wet the paper where I'm working there. And then I pushed some of it up again onto the dry area to create some little jagged edges. I also painted some darker black in front of the eye as well. I painted that darker area on dry paper and then I used my damp brush to soften the edges and blend in the black with the layer below. The wing feathers and tail feathers I painted in individually. I layered the black over the top but again I allowed some of that lighter underwash to show through. I didn't completely cover it with the black paint. You can see there's variation in the feathers. I've thinned the paint down with some water where I wanted it lighter. Some of them needed darkening so I layered some more black over the top. I painted in the legs and the branch that the bird is standing on and I could see that the black feathers at the front on the head needed to be darkened so I gave them a second layer. This is on dry paper. So flicking my brush around those white feathers. I also added a few more white feathers with a white watercolour pencil. I painted a bit more black around the outside edge of the eye as well. Then when I was happy with it I took it off my board and there it is finished. If you'd like to see the full length tutorial of this painting it will be available on my Patreon site next month. So I hope you'll join us there if you want to learn more about painting in watercolour. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I post regular watercolour tutorials like this one. 
I'll see you soon. This little chatty bird is found in Australia, New Zealand, no, not New Zealand, New Guinea, New Guinea, New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and in in Indonesia. I've mentioned before in of building a studio for me to paint in down the back down there down sort of down there and over that way yeah. we're in the process of building a studio 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 I've said it before there are hundreds of water clumps water classes, water classes, just take as many water classes as you would like. And the entire catalogue is now available with subtitles, 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 subtitles. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel because I post regular watercolour tutorials like this one every month, week, month, month, week, fortnight, fortnight, every fortnight.